welcome to another edition of Attract Well Office Hours. I'm Coach Ashley, joined today by founder of Attract Well, Greg Kilwine. Hey, Greg. Hey, everyone. We're really glad you're here today. We really are. It is uh, such a beautiful day here in New York City. It's almost 60 degrees outside. We literally had snow two days ago. The stuff is wacky. Greg, are you buried in North Dakota? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we had our foot of snow last night. It's still it's snowing again today. So yeah, I'll be doing some shoveling later. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> you have to like clear a path for your tiny dogs. It's too tall for them. <laughs> the whole thing. Yep. Let us know where you guys are coming in from. Do you have crazy snow or do you have wacky warm weather? Uh, we're excited to have you here today, wherever you are in the world. Uh, this is what 79 in Savannah. Stop it. <laughs> I'm going to be in Atlanta in two weeks, and I think I should fully expect it's going to be near 80 probably, right? So anyway, uh, so we are live every week here uh, for these live sessions at 2 p.m. Eastern time, and this is an opportunity for you uh, to come and learn, of course, how to grow your business, how to manage your business, serve your clients more effectively and at scale using AttractWell. And of course, if you don't know AttractWell yet, uh, welcome. This is a great place to get started learning about us. And today we're actually going to be getting into some tech tips that will help you build fluency in AttractWell and beyond when you're getting to work in your business. In today's day and age, you just... Every business needs to have an online presence. You have to have some kind of a digital strategy if you want to have a footprint out there in the world with what you do. And so that does mean that you do kind of need to learn a little bit of a new language. And I'm going to be using that as, as sort of um, an analogy here throughout what we're talking about here today. And, uh, and of course, uh, we're going to get into some fun tech tips and tricks. Uh, I'm going to call them fun. You may find them fun. You may just... Just, just take a deep breath and, and let's get through this. <laughs> These are things that we recommend that you know how to do. And we did go through uh, our team kind of group sourced uh, this list of stuff that we're going to be sharing with you today. So go ahead and keep, uh, keep it coming uh, in the chat. Again, we're always thrilled to meet you guys, to learn more about what you do, and today to find out what kind of wacky weather you're having <laughs> in your neck of the woods. We're going to go ahead and hop out of video and get into slides uh, that we have prepared for you so that our recording looks awesome on YouTube, which by the way, if you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel or youtube.com slash attract well, pretty please make sure you are subscribed and you can get all of our replays and know exactly uh, when they go live. So um, of course, be sure to check that out. All right. So uh, this, again, is Attractable Office Hours. We do this every week at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Today, we are focusing on tech tips and shortcuts. Now, if you are on our list to be updated for our office hours, then you received a link today to a cheat sheet that I want you to please save for your future reference uh, that uh, will help you when you are getting to work on your tech in your business. A lot of this stuff is obviously, of course, uh, dedicated to use in your AttractWell system, but you're, you'll find that there's a good deal of these that are going to help you when you're using other services to promote and, uh, and create content for your businesses as, as well. Um, that's including, but not limited to things like social media, Canva, et cetera. So we're gonna get into those here today. So first up, we of course are going to get into those favorite tech tips. We'll take a look at a lot of them in action so you can kind of see how these things can work. And then of course we will get into some live help and Q and A. We do have uh, someone who booked a live review today. So we're very much looking forward to sitting down uh, with you and talking through your questions. So. I want to encourage you to head over to the chat if you have not done so already. If you're on YouTube, of course, you can leave a comment. Uh, tell us about your business. What do you do? Who do you serve? How do you serve them? Now, if you're here on our live call and have questions, there is a Q&A feature here. We're using webinars on Zoom, and so there's a Q&A feature. Please go ahead and add your questions there. If it's something that needs to be addressed, uh, you know, maybe on video, then that's something that we could certainly do. But uh, the guy who actually created the software is literally right here and able to answer questions as we are going through the process here. So don't be shy. And of course, if you would like to work together live today, as one person has signed up to do today, you can go to attractwell.com slash work review. And what you'll do uh, is let us know what you'd like to learn more about, what you'd like to work on, and then you'll be able to create dedicated space to work together in the second half of a call just like this one in the future. And of course, if you just want to get on the list, go to attractwell.com slash office hours, and you'll be the first to know about what's coming up. And of course, get tools like that cheat sheet that we sent out earlier today. 
And uh, if you are in the midst of getting started or moving over, migrating from another platform, or you just you have an idea of what you want, but you just don't feel adept or that it is, it's perhaps not the best economy of your time, we've got folks who can help you out on our team. And that's attractable.com slash concierge. You can go over there to learn more about what our team can do for you and how they can help you get moving forward more quickly. All right, now let's get into this. How many of you remember learning to ride a bike? Can you I just raise your hand or say so in the chat? How old were you when you were taught how to ride a bicycle? I think I was probably about seven years old, six or seven years old, maybe. Might be younger, I don't remember. Either way, it's typically when we're a little younger, right? Maybe learning to swim. That's somewhere around the same age as well, I think, right? or maybe learning a new language. So our first dozen or so attempts at trying something new, if you could remember being on the bike, being a little wobbly, being in the pool, being a little scared, or trying to form a sentence with a native speaker uh, in a language that you are just kind of getting started with and um, you know feeling a little bit like a child, <laughs> our first few attempts at something that's new to us is they're typically kind of awkward and maybe even anxiety inducing, especially where I'm talking about being an adult learning a second language and trying to communicate like an intelligent person with folks who are native uh, speakers, right? But after a while, with any of the things that you start learning to do, after a while, you start to build muscle memory and you start kind of connecting logical dots between actions and outcomes that help to accelerate your mastery. And before long, the thing that was new, that was once awkward and challenging is now something that comes almost as naturally to you as walking and talking, right? And perhaps if you're certified in a particular methodology, right? Uh, the very beginning, when you're getting started with that, you're super wobbly, got to rely on the books, right? Uh, but now it's something that is really second nature to you. So this phenomena is as true about learning to do a cartwheel as it is about using business software. So when you're already an expert at what you do, it can kind of be frustrating or demoralizing even to see the tools that you want to use to grow as their own challenge that's standing in the way of you growing your business. How many of you have felt this way before? I just want to do the thing I'm good at. Why do I have to learn to do this and this and that and that and have a this and do a that and show up in all of these ways? Can I just do the thing? You felt this way before, I'm sure, right? You say it all the time. Yeah. So it's easy to see it that way, but as I mentioned at the, the top of the call, in today's day and age, it's, it's really a necessity that we have some degree of fluency in managing our digital footprint because the way of the future is only becoming more tech, right? It's more tech-centric. And for you to be able to have some degree of mastery and control over what that means, means a lot for the future of what you do, right? So it is, it is kind of a language in effect that we all would be well served to learn, right? So I'm sure that sounds familiar to you guys. The trick here is to build fluency in the right things. Not to know everything, but to build fluency in the right things. And that fluency does take practice. But as you may know, with learning language, there are tips and tricks and shortcuts that can help you get fluent faster. Once upon a time, the only way to learn a second language was to live in that locale or to read a book that someone wrote or to work with a teacher who teaches it. But now there are softwares that can bring people to fluency in a fraction of the time that what we ever thought possible before, right? And that's because the folks who really understand how learning happens were able to take that phenomenon of connecting the logical dots and outcomes and those tips and tricks and integrating them in sooner without you having to spend all the time to figure out this is the thing that I need to do, right? So what we're going to focus on today are some things that you can start integrating into your own tech vocabulary so that you can become fluent in the things that matter now 
All right, so today we're going to get into some of our team's favorite tech tips and shortcuts. And we have, of course, created a cheat sheet for you to keep. Greg has put that here into the webinar chat. And of course, we'll include it in the description uh, when we upload our video here to YouTube later today. So we're going to get into this. This begins with keyboard shortcuts. How many of you are familiar with or feel like you know the majority of keyboard shortcuts? If you have been tech inclined, or maybe you grew up um, you know, in or after the Oregon Trail days of learning computers, <laughs> then you, you probably know a few, but let's get into some that are gonna be particularly important to you, starting with formatting. Uh, and I am gonna show you sort of a diagram if you're not familiar with these keys on a keyboard here in just a moment. So the first thing is to select all. And so this is going to be all of the content inside of a field or on a page. This will of course work in your word processors. It'll work on social media. It'll work in Canva. And of course it works in attract well. You can bold your text with control or command B. Add an I and it's italicized your text. You can underline with control or command U, right? And so this is all formatting. And you'll notice, and I'll show you this here in just a bit, a lot of these, these keyboard shortcuts follow the same function as some of the um, some of the tools that we have in our editor menu, right, on Attractwell. But this is so much faster. Like instead of you like wanting to bold your text, highlighting the text and then stopping and then going up and finding the B to press it, right? If you just hit con command or control B, it's bold and then you're done. Hit it a second time, it's not bold anymore, right? So we've got through this. Um, if you want to copy text or copy anything that's in a field, you can uh, go con Commander Control A and then Commander Control C and grab everything. Right? You want to paste that Commander Control V. Here's one that should be your best friend: Command or Control Z. If you want to undo something you just did, and this again works all over the place, where you have something that you're inputting, if you hit Commander Control Z then you're gonna be able to undo. If you wanna redo, add the shift key in with that command or control Z. If you wanna find something on a page, and this goes for scrolling the internet, this goes for scrolling code, looking through code, uh, something that's on a page on your website, whatever that might be, you can go to uh, find something by hitting command or control F. If you wanna insert a link, this is one of my favorite quick cheats. Uh, if I want to um, link text in an email that I'm writing in a campaign, or if I want to create a button on a page, instead of going and, and, and you know, through 14 different steps, I highlight text and I hit command because I'm on a Mac, K, and then the URL box pops up. I pop my URL in, I change it into a button, I'm good to go. There's also an emoji keyboard shortcut. This one blew my mind. I didn't know about this. Did you guys know about this? If you have a Mac, you hit command, control, space, and an emoji keyboard pops up. If you want to insert, like copy paste an emoji into what you're writing. If you're on a PC, you could go to your Windows key and space bar at the same time, and you'll get the same result. A screenshot is also something that you may want to use. If maybe you're reaching out to our team and you have a question about something that you're seeing on your screen, that's uh, command shift three or four. Three is gonna take the whole screen. Four is going to allow you to drag over an area. And then the windows key shift and S is gonna work on a PC. I also particularly love this screenshot hack. If you want to link to a video from an email, you can't put video in email, but you can take a screenshot of it and people will see that play button and want to hit it. And then of course, if you hyperlink the image, you can send them to wherever that video lives. And then finally, we have the paste plain text feature. This is another huge time saver. We do have a paste plain text feature built in to the editor in attract well, but what you're able to do here is if you hit uh, command option shift and V we're going to paste in. So let's just say, for instance, you have written out a blog post uh, content in a word processor. And so you've got a thousand words and you want to get all of that moved over into the blog, the blog post uh, editor in a tracked well so that you can start formatting it and release it for publication. You're going to go over to your word processor and hit command or control A to select all, command or control C to copy, and then head over to your editor and then do this command option shift V or control shift V depending on what 
device you're on. And now the whole thing is pasted in and it's pasted in to match the formatting of that field that it's in. And so what that means is, is that it's going to preserve the settings that you already have. And it's not going to import any kind of weird looking stuff when you do, which is pretty cool. I actually want to break out of this share real quick and go over and show you how some of these work and how just incredibly time-saving they can be. So I'm going to go over to, um, I'm going to go over and just pretend like we're creating a blog post here and show you again, a couple of these really cool options. So we'll pretend like we're writing a post. Of course I could go in and I don't know if I have here, let me just copy all of this stuff from this field here that I have open on the page. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go right here and I'm going to see what happens if I just paste command V. This is from my presentation that I was just sharing with you guys. Look how big and obnoxious that is. I don't want that. I just hit command Z. I undid what I just did. Now I'm gonna go command option shift V or this would be command control V if you are on a PC. And look at that, that looks totally normal, right? Pretty, pretty cool. So uh, what if I want to find in this whole thing that I just, um, I just pasted, I wanna find something there. So I'm gonna go command F and I'm gonna look for where I said paste and I'm gonna type in paste and you can see all of the different places, places that I've pasted. Maybe I want to hyperlink this text. I'm gonna hit Command K, and then I'm gonna put in the URL, hit insert. What if I want it to be a button? Go to style, give it one of your button settings, and now you have a button. Pretty, pretty cool. If I wanna bold something, select it, Control B, italicize, select it, I underline, select it, U, et cetera, right? So lots of cool things that you can do there to save yourself a ton of time. All right, so let's get back into our slides here and keep this thing going. If you're learning something new, maybe something that you didn't know before, uh, let us know. Excited to see what is standing out for you. All right, so we've gone through our keyboard shortcuts and these are, of course are on that cheat sheet for you. If you have a Mac, uh, wait for the next one, but for PC, the control button that I'm referring to is this one over here in the corner. It either spells out the whole word control or it says CTRL. And then where I said the Windows key, sometimes it says WIN, like the one directly to its left, but often it actually has the Windows logo on it. All right, so on a Mac, the command key is this guy right here where you see that little symbol. Uh, that's going to be the one that you use the bulk of the time for these keyboard shortcuts. So knowing these shortcuts, like I mentioned, are such a huge time saver, right? So uh, we did just go and see those in action. The next thing that we are going to cover here is a workflow checklist. The next big time saver for you to really consider when you are working in a track well is your order of operations. So typically you're going to, if you're going to create a funnel, whereby someone can enter their name and information on a page on your site, be tagged appropriately, receive a campaign and any of uh, whatever it is that you're promising to them, et cetera, send them to the right pages. There's a workflow that you're gonna wanna follow, right? As an order of operations, you're gonna wanna follow that's gonna save you the most time. Typically, when we think about the thing that we want to engineer, we, we, we begin trying to construct what we see first when it's complete, kind of like building a house, right? If you know you want, you, you know your future living room is going to have these types of windows and these types of drapes, you know that if the foundation isn't built yet, it's not really smart to go out and buy those, right? This is kind of the same approach that we're taking here. So generally speaking, if you're going to build a funnel, the first thing that you want to do is to write out everything that you know you want to say put it in a word processor because you know you can go and use those magic keyboard shortcuts and paste everything in where it goes. And you don't have to worry about trying to be creative or think like a copywriter while you're being a designer or a builder, right? Now, if you are offering a call uh, as, as something that somebody is opting in for, you do wanna make sure that you create those Zoom meeting links and grab the link for people to join the call to include in your content. If you're using any images or creating PDFs, of course, you want to create those. Obviously, Canva is a recommended tool for that purpose. 
Then you want to create a saved reply. And this is optional, but if you know that uh, for this particular series, maybe you're going to brand it in a particular way, you're going to name it something, then you can create a saved reply that you can use as a template so that all of the emails in the campaign for this funnel are going to look similar and maybe already have the same links embedded. Then you want to actually create your campaign. Of course, you can use that using your pre-written content and that saved reply. From there, we create a confirmation page, right? That's where somebody goes after they opt in. Then we create an automation it, that applies a tag, the campaign above, and then sends them to a confirmation page. This is an optional step, but if you see yourself using this funnel in more than one place, then an automation is going to be a great additional thing to go ahead and create so that you can use this in multiple places. Then of course, you finally, at the end here, we create the front door. That's the landing page or the page with the form that offers whatever it is that you're offering. You're gonna attach the automation to that page uh, in, the, um, in the page landing page settings, or you would actually do what the automation would do, which is add the tag, the campaign, and connect the confirmation page. Now I do have links uh, in the last uh, checkbox here uh, to our courses and to our launch challenge workshops uh, where you can actually go and get complete uh, done for you uh, templates that you can use uh, to create things like this yourself. So definitely take advantage of those and those are free to attract, attract well members. So if you are following along with one of our funnel courses or workshops, or you have a funnel already that you are looking to modify, if you follow the steps that I just shared with you in order, you will be able to build a complete funnel in the least amount of time possible. You aren't gonna have to go back and change things and worry about whether things are connected properly. If you're building them in order, then you basically have everything that you need and your final step is to plug it all in. You don't have to go and say, oops, I need a this, right? Or, oh, I forgot that because you've already done everything that you need and then it's ready to go. All right, now moving on. Uh, we also have some of our favorite recommended tools to use alongside AttractWell. Um, and so we've got a set of free tools that we recommend. So if you are uploading things to our system, whether that be audio files uh, or um, PDFs, things like that, uh, sometimes you might need to reduce a file size. So we do have a link there uh, where you can see a couple of different options of places you could go for that purpose. There's a really cool color palette generator if you're working on designing your brand. Uh, there's some awesome design inspiration for how you might want to have your website set up. I've got that link there. There's icons uh, for different purposes you can use in your designs, stock photography that is free, some different options there. And then uh, there is uh, hosting for free video content. And what I actually have linked there is YouTube Studio, because if you've got content that is free for the world to see, uh, then YouTube is where you wanna have that because that is where you're going to have the best option, or sorry, the best ability to be discovered by potential leads, right? Then of course we do have paid tools listed here, Canva Pro for branding and design. We do have a Canva integration for free and pro Canva uh, inside of AttractWell. Uh, if you want to have your own private video hosting, we've got links here that work well uh, with our system. If you use calendars, uh, you can you know, get those from these places. Uh, there are some free options for calendars and I've gone over those. I think we have a calendar training specifically on our YouTube channel. Uh, where you can, we talk about how to embed those into your AttractWell platform. Uh, you can use free versions. Of course, there are paid ones. And then of course, if you like to use quizzes, uh, some folks who use us do, uh, you can also uh, visit that link there to learn more about those. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is take an in-depth look at some hacks that are available for you for design in your AttractWell account. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the stuff that's already made for you that you can use as a jumping off point. And then from there, we're going to get into some pretty cool things that you can also do uh, to build off of the work that you've already done. So what I'm gonna do here is go over to pages. And when you wanna create a new page, of course, you can go to create page. And we have got all of these different options for you to pick something, pick a starting point, right? So maybe we want to use this about me as an initial um, design. This is our jumping off point, right? So this would be a template for a page. 
You can also use section templates. So maybe I want to pop one in that has a series of photos. So we do have general templates here, section templates. If you want to have a digest of things that are happening on your blog, you can do that as well if you're blogging with Attract Well. You can insert forms, you can insert header and footers, and you could also put in photos, right? So you can actually just kind of design this out however you want to. And of course we have the full page templates as well as section templates you can use to make them your own. Now uh, we do have, I have linked there uh, in this list, um, the five, let me scroll down to it. Here we go. We've got the, the five essential done for you templates. This is actually a link to a YouTube training. And if you go to the description, then you will find uh, a resource bundle where you can get all of um, everything that you need to, to actually utilize those there for free. Now, the, the other thing that I want to show you guys is how to paste in the designs that you've already created, starting with this copy and page feature. And so what this looks like is uh, if we go and let's just say I've been designing this about me page and I want to utilize content that I've already put uh, into another design. I'm going to scroll down here and maybe I want to add it right here before the call to action at the end. Right. So I'm just hitting this plus button like I'm going to create a new something, but instead I'm going to go to copy in another page. Now I'm going to go and find, here's this thing that I want to maybe offer here, copy in. And now all of this content from that page is now in this page, right? And of course, maybe I just want to use uh, the first, you know, three parts of this. So I'm just going to delete the other ones that I don't need, right? So that's copy in page is what that is. You also have the ability to copy and paste code. So in some cases, you might want to just grab the code from one section and paste it into another place on your site. So let's just say, for instance, I really like the way that this particular section is formatted. So what I want to do is copy the source code for the whole section so I can paste it into another place on my site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to settings in the page, go to advanced, and then go to advanced editor mode. Now in advanced editor mode, you'll see that we don't have uh, the, the sort of editor toolbar uh, in the same way that, that we do otherwise. You're actually editing the entire section at once. So like I said, I like the way that this particular section is laid out. So I'm gonna go over here to where the three dots are, more miscellaneous, switch to code view, and remember our keyboard shortcuts, command A, command C, copy. And now I wanna go to another page and I want to paste that in to a section on another page. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to settings, advanced, go to advanced editor mode here. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to add a new section. And it doesn't matter what kind of section you pick because we're really, we're going to be just overwriting the code. So click the more miscellaneous, click the code view, command A, command V to paste, close the code view, and now you have it there, right? So you can use the copy and page feature. You do have to go back and delete whatever you don't want from that page that you've copied in, uh, or you can simply, if it's just one section, use this code copy and then paste the code into another page. And then of course you can go to your settings and switch back to normal mode. And then of course you can edit this just like you would normally edit it otherwise. Okay, so that's advanced editor mode. Uh, we also have the ability to use saved replies as templates uh, for your email and for your blog posts. We have gone over this in some detail in existing uh, trainings on our YouTube channel, but let me show you this real quick. It's kind of an unsung hero of our system, uh, this saved reply feature. You have the ability to basically establish what you want your formatting or your sort of visual formatting the layout of something to look like, whether that be email or a blog post, and then use it over and over and over again, right? And you could even use saved replies to build saved replies. So let's just say, for instance, I really like this um, newsletter header one, and I actually want to use this for my blog posts. Right, because I want to be able to maybe swap this out with a nice image for the top of my blog post, and then I want to add all of my additional text here. So I'm just going to call this blog post template, 
And maybe I want to actually add a little bit more formatting to it. So I'm going to keep this right here. I actually want to go ahead and unlink and remove that button. And let me drop in an additional saved reply here. Maybe this blank newsletter template too. I want to delete this guy because I already have a big image. All right, so this is looking nice. I'm going to remove this because I'm not going to be linking off in my blog post. There we go. So I like how this looks and I'm this is going to be the blog post template. And so I'm going to create the saved reply here. Now, if I know for certain that I want to, let's just say, for instance, I know that I want in my blog post uh, for this headline, when I have a headline, I want to make sure that the paragraph setting is headline one. And maybe I, I know that I want just on my blog posts, I want the font family to be just a little bit different from how I have it on the rest of my site. Just, you know, as an example, oops. Uh, and I want this to be maybe 18 point text instead of 14. So we'll go there and we'll do that. And then of course you would go through the rest of this and make those changes as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and just do that here one more time. We're gonna change this to heading one, change the font family, and then change our text here to 18 point font, right? So once we've done this, what we're able to do, and I'm going to save this here, and you could go ahead and, and add photos here if you want to, but since you're going to be changing them for each blog post anyway, you don't really need to worry about doing that. So I'm going to go over to blog post. I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to go to my saved replies, and there's my blog post template. And now I can simply go in and swap out with my Canva image. I can swap out the text that I've already written in my word processor. Remember. Uh, Command option shift V to paste plain text or use the paste plain text feature, which is right here, this little um, clipboard. And then, of course, you know, you just continue on with modifications. Now, similarly, if I would have named this template uh, newsletter template, which it certainly could be as well, when we go to uh, send an email to our contacts who are signed up for our newsletter, we would, of course, go to our contacts, we would filter them for our newsletter um, folks, we would go to mail. And then again, under saved replies, we would drop that in here, make any changes that we want, and then schedule or send right away that newsletter. So that is how we use our saved replies to save a ton of time. You can also use a copy feature for your online classes. If you want to, um, like if you already have an online class uh, lesson that you've created, whose design you want to repeat, in your other, um, for your other lessons that you do, of course, have this copy feature. So you can copy the lesson. It'll preserve everything that's there with the exception of the uploads. And you can, of course, use that as a template for your next lesson. And then finally, let's say, for instance, you are working with one-on-one -on -one clients, private clients, and you want to have a private dashboard for each client. Once you create an entire vault, where you'll serve your clients, then what you're able to do, once you have it set up exactly as you'd like for it to be, you can create a resource bundle and add your vault to it, then claim your own resource bundle, call this client vault, and we'll use this one. So this will be a private client vault. I'll create the bundle, and then all I need to do is copy the link or view it actually, and then I can claim it myself. And now I have that vault copied. So that's going to save you a ton of time as well. This would also work really well if your formatting and layout uh, and sort of information that you would have in a vault for one use case would be very similar in a second one. You could use it as a template as opposed to a true copy like you would if you were uh, repeating a client experience. So that is that section. Let me hop back on over to our slides. We also have included on this cheat sheet image resolutions in a list. And some of these are actually useful in multiple places on the site. Uh, so definitely recommend, like for instance, where we have custom sharing image. This is also the image resolution uh, that's often recommended for blog posts. 
right? Um, if you want to use photo strip images or main images on your website or logos, those are all um, well, it's called a logo image in Canva is that those are all 500 square, right? Your website header logo, the thing that goes up in that top left-hand corner, that's over here as well. Uh, your member area headers are, are here. I also recommend that you maybe sketch this one in. If you want to have a section background image, I personally love using any of the banner settings in Canva. So that's like blog banner or LinkedIn banner. Uh, both of those work really well. So, uh, so yeah, this is a cheat sheet for that purpose. And then finally, we're going to take a look at some tips for sharing your finished work. So once you have gone through your designing and you're ready to, uh, to start sharing what you're doing, a couple of quick things. Number one, make sure what you're sharing. If it says attractwell.com slash app, you're sharing an internal link. Right? That's actually the link for the editor of whatever you're working on. And it's not something that's going to work for the person that you're sending it to. So be mindful of that, uh, because what will happen here is that you'll wind up sending them to the Attractwell website, which we would certainly appreciate. However, it's not what you're looking to do, most likely, in that circumstance. So uh, do make sure that uh, if your the URL has attractwell.com slash app in it, uh, make sure that you uh, take another look and actually grab the view or share link uh, so that you can actually share that correctly. There is also a drop down menu when you're linking to pages in Attractwell and I can actually go and show you guys that real quick here as well. Uh, when you are hoping to share something and I'll actually open the editor right here. Let's just say I want to, sh to share, I'm gonna say click here and I'm going to command A, command K, voila. That's how we insert a link. You can use this drop down menu. If you pick something from this drop down menu, then it's going to insert uh, that. Of course, you wanna make sure it says what you want it to say. And then of course, this will always embed the correct link if you're using uh, this choose link feature. Okay, getting back into this. Um, if you wanna create forwarding or pretty links, we do have an auto forward feature in our pages, which is really cool. Uh, and so I'm gonna show you that as well as um, how to make sure you have your, your sharing image and description set up overall on your site. And then of course, on your individual pages. So let's go and take a look first at the pretty link feature. It's not actually called pretty links, but it's an auto forwarding feature. So if we go to pages here, and let's just say you have, maybe you have a Zoom link that's just not cute, but you wanna make sure that it is a good one that you can share with people that's easy to share. So if client meeting is this, I'm gonna go over here and we want the link for them to join to be what we're grabbing. So I'm gonna to go to copy link. So that's the link that we'll share. I'm gonna to go to pages, create page, doesn't matter what's on it. It could be blank, it could have stuff on it. Nobody's ever going to see it because it's auto forward. So we're gonna to go to settings. We're gonna give it a name and I'm gonna call this client call all one word. And I'm gonna to go to advanced, auto forward to URL and then command V, I paste it in that Zoom link. And so now when somebody, so you have to save it of course, but when you go to your website.com slash client call, it's going to send them to your Zoom link right? Or if you want to use this, if you want to say your name.com slash group, you could in the advanced settings here, put your Facebook group, right? Whatever that might look like. Cool, right? All right. Now, the other thing I was going to show you is, um, is your custom uh, sharing image and description. So if you're using, and I'm going to go over here to customize my site, if you have just the my story and photo right now set up as sort of like the homepage for your website, which is totally cool if you're just getting started, when you go to customize built in theme, you can actually, and if you aren't a network marketer, you won't see these features if you don't have that enabled. Uh, but you put your sharing image here and your sharing description. If you've ever been sent a link uh, via text or you've ever posted a link to Facebook, you typically see that there is an image that populates as well as some verbiage, right? Uh, and so what's going to show is the title, an image, and then whatever you put in the sharing description. So if you want, 
uh, you know, if you're using that built in part of our website as your homepage and you want to share it, then this is, of course, what you want to make sure that you uh, have set up. And then on your individual pages, you should 100% do this on your homepage. You should also do this on a page where you are maybe offering a, like a landing page, like a lead magnet. So here, let me go to home and you can actually see. I believe this, uh, this stuff is set up on this particular page. So if I go to the settings, nope, we don't have it set up. So you would actually choose the custom sharing image that you would add here. And then you would put in your sharing description, right? And then whatever the, um, the title of the page is, is what's going to show up there as well. So just make sure that when you're ready to share, you have those things set up uh, so that everything looks nice and is functioning the way that you want it to. So I'm gonna see if there is if there are any questions. And of course, once we get through those, I do have someone who is here for a work review. So Mark, you asked, is there an individual training for this one? Can you let me know what you're talking about so I can maybe answer that for you better? Um, okay, now let me also see. Chandra, are you here? I'm gonna go ahead. Yes, awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and bring you out because uh, we got some stuff to talk about. I'm excited to chat with you today. I know you wanted to kind of look and see and make sure things are actually sort of connected the way you want them to. Okay, you got it, Mark? If you, if you got it, good. If you don't, feel free, ask. <laughs> We're here. All right, so Chandra, let's talk. All right, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for all the training. I am devouring it because it has saved me so much time and effort because I typically overcomplicate things. And that the training that you did is specifically about overcomplicating things really helped. So thank you. Good. I'm glad. That's awesome. So, um, so yeah, well, what are what do you what do you feel that you might have overcomplicated? <laughs> is, is that is that you kind of want to take a look uh, at something that you might have overcomplicated or are we approaching well, something and or, trying to not do that? Well, believe it or not, you've answered actually a few questions just in this training, which is why I'm watching so many, because it seems like I just kind of get put my head down, hunker down, do all this work and then realize it's not working the way I thought it would. So going back and watching your trainings, I'm like, okay, now let me see if I did that right. Um, mm. And I, I can't remember the questions that I asked for this training, but I actually ran into a problem a little bit bigger than whatever I asked last night. Can I ask that question? Absolutely. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Well, um, I guess I missed the blaring um, mobile display buttons. And so I sent my my live website, I was so excited, so proud of all this work. And I sent it out and someone looked at it on their phone. And then they said, you might want to check this out. And it looks horrible. So oh no, I know. So I just, um, is there any um, hack that I can do or something that's, that won't what will save me a little time to make it look a little, um, I guess, so that it fits better? Yeah, yeah, let's let's do that real quick. So this is, it's, it's relatively simple, uh, but basically what you're gonna wanna do, obviously you've got your page set up, um, but we're gonna go to um, this viewer right here, phone preview. Okay. And so we can see that this, this top section is 100% not going to work. Now, the right. reason okay. why uh, this is not going to work here is because this is an image that you have stuck to the background. <gasps> Okay. Yeah. And so the better thing to do, uh, in, in my opinion, would be to have maybe just the background of you here okay. and, and this cool thing that's back here, this is sort of the, the demon, I guess, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then actually have this as text in the section, right? So, okay. and okay. that would make it more responsive. Now, what I would do in the meantime is, uh, is let's, um, we're gonna make these not visible on mobile, definitely not on mobile. Let's see what this looks like on tablet. Nope, we're not gonna do that on okay. tablet either. And of course it does It does work on, uh, on desktop well enough. This actually, that's fine. So we are gonna remove these from visibility on mobile and tablet. And then what we'll do is we'll just wanna create something that's fairly similar here. So I'm going to, I'm gonna make a copy of this section just for the sake of its size to kind of match. 
Uh, but I am going to remove this uh, section background. Okay. So we're going to remove the section background. Um, perhaps we'll use a color for the background that's maybe similar to the one that you're using here, uh, like this nice blue. All right, and then we have don't run from your demons, learn their names. And so what we'll do here is we will put a couple of different sections here. Let me get out of here. And basically what you're gonna wanna do is in your you know nice big header text and in white, I think is what you have up there. You would put don't run from your demons. And then we'll go into maybe the normal font, learn their names. And then let me show you how. And of course, you can format this however you want to. Uh, but basically, what you're going to want to do, and I'm not 100% sure, probably shouldn't actually have duplicated that section because it's got a little bit of a weird formatting up top. But essentially what you're going to want to do is make a copy of or make another version of your mm -hmm. um, your header image for desktop. And you're going okay. to basically alternate what they're visible on. So this one is no longer going to be visible on these two size devices. And this one is only visible on those same two size devices. So you're oh, to okay, okay. So it's not so going to be a, a, a duplicate all the way down of the entire page. Okay, got it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, exactly. So now you can see if we preview in either of these two, and of course, please don't use the section that I've created here. It doesn't look that nice. Right. <laughs> uh, but um, but yeah, you can do um, a mobile version, and then and then of course your your desktop one still looks like the one that you created already. And you can and do that throughout. So, when, so basically, when when you scroll through, if you see something in mobile view that's like, oh no, uh, then right. you you would want to make a new version of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's that part right like there that, that you're on. Exactly. I was like, oh my gosh, what in the heck am I going to do to fix that? <laughs> yeah. So what, what I would actually do in this particular case uh, is I would create a um, one of these. Okay. I would go into Canva and, uh, and, and create an image that's just of you. So not the whole image with you on the, on the right-hand side of it, but just okay. this put that image right here, put the okay. text right here, and it's going to be more mobile responsive. <gasps> okay. Okay. That, that is awesome. Thank you so much. Cause I was just like, Oh no, once again, all that work I did, I have to redo. <laughs> no, you don't have to redo it. You just, you have to make a version that'll play better on mobile. And just as, as a rule, um, it's really, it's, it's kind of difficult to create designs that work on all platforms, like a singular one, like this image, like the design of this right. image is, it was never really going to work well on mobile because of its resolution, right? right? Uh, right so, right. but if you take, for instance, again, using the same idea and just have this really cool kind of, uh, you know, person in the background here, have mm -hmm. that, just that be the background, then the words can kind of slide over it where it needs to and be right. mobile responsive. Okay. Okay. I love that, that you can alternate what's visible along the, along the way. Okay. Awesome. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. So when you reached out, um, you were wanting to know what pages should have forms on them and what type of campaigns belong on them. Uh, making sure that you've got your elements hooked up in your campaigns and uh, just kind of getting eyeballs on your systems uh, so that you can feel clear to start marketing. So where do you right, want to start? Right. Right. Um, so with the very first on that home page, there is a little drop, I guess it's a drop down or the form once they enter, like I was thinking, um, I don't even know where all that goes besides contacts. Um, and I'm asking them questions. And so I'm like, where, how do I know what they answer? And I haven't really delved into the contacts. So if it's, you know, like blaring in my face, then I apologize. <laughs> oh, no worries. No worries. Yeah. So 
Um, you have, you can actually see where things go when you create your forms. It's it typically automatically, it's going to go into something called past actions. And that's just, you go to the contact card and it's uh, midway down on the right hand side. Uh, so if okay. we go to leads, um, yeah, so this is going to go into past actions. So if you ask them any of these questions, then of course it could populate those things in your um, in your contacts information, but generally speaking, uh, if you're wanting to figure out sort of what they, you know, what do they describe themselves as, mm -hmm. then that's going to go into past actions. And then also, interestingly, if this is how they see themselves, maybe you want to tag them with new novice experienced expert elite, or maybe there's a specific set of messages that you want to send to them based on whichever of these answers they've chosen. You can click that's here. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought I was doing. And I guess yeah. I didn't do it. <laughs> so in this case, we call okay. the noob. And then maybe if you have a noob campaign, you attach the noob campaign here. And this okay. one, we tag the novice, attach the novice campaign, et cetera. So that's what that would look like. And then on the oh. individual contact, you'll be able to see what they selected. And then of course, you'd be able to filter all of your contacts for your noobs and for your novices and your experienced and et cetera. And of course they would be receiving the series of messages uh, that you have chosen for that particular designation. Wonderful. Okay, that actually answered a couple a couple of questions I had. That is what I was missing. Cool. I just didn't quite follow through all the way, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh it's, like, it's, um, it's like learning a new language. It's cool. It takes a while. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and then one more question um, as far as the member area with the vaults. And I don't, mm -hmm. it seemed like you kind of touched on this at a, another video. Um, if there's a video training that I've missed that is going to answer this, I'll take that too. Um, it, so let's say anyone that shows up on my site for any reason whatsoever, is there like one general member area where they can just pop in and talk to each other and and get freebies that relate to just about everyone or is, does that not make sense that's too much you can do that you absolutely have the option to do that so the way that you do that is first you want to create a vault that you want them to be able to access if they just show up there for free so in, okay. in that case you would create a vault and in the individual vault settings uh, then you would let others in the member area see and join it Right. So they can okay. just go straight okay. into it. And then, of course, you would also in your member area, I believe it's in the setup. Yeah, it's in the setup for your member area. Uh, you would also allow folks from your website uh, to this. You would check this box right here, allow any website visitor to just sign up for the member area. And so if there's a vault that folks can just join straight mm -hmm. from your site, uh, then, yeah, you could just send them to your website.com slash members. Uh, they can create a login and then they can get that free thing. And then, of course, depending on how you have your other vaults set up, they may see those and have the opportunity to purchase them or maybe they're hidden and they only get they only get to know about it unless you want to share that information with them. OK, OK, um, that actually brought me to another question, if I can just ask real quick about sure. if. So there's these member areas and I only have a you know one class or I think two classes already on there, but um, it, on the menu, I didn't, am I supposed to create something that says login? You mean for on the menu for your site? Yeah. Yeah, I just so thought you, about that. You could have a member area login in your menu and that's actually one of the presets here that you could choose. Uh, so if you wanted to maybe add a menu and we want to send them to the member area. Oh, okay. So uh, this could be login or members. And then of course, when you add this, uh, you could choose to choose where it goes uh, or you could make it its own thing. But either way, the, the, the short link to it is gonna be whatever your URL.com is slash members. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. I'm Happy so to excited. help. Yay. Yeah, we're excited for you. This is cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, for sure. All right, Karen had a question, and yes, there is time. Thank you for asking. Um, Karen says, I'm a health coach and would like to have an accountability tracking sheet that clients fill out, inputting their personal data into that I'm able to see as well, but only me and not as a shared group. Is the tip that you shared about creating a resource bundle for a vault the way that I could do that in a streamlined way for me and clients? Uh, does that make sense? Or is there another way you know of that's easy? So Karen, I'm gonna bring you out to chat so we can talk through this. There are two options uh, that I would recommend for this purpose. One of them would be to have a private vault for each client. If you want to have um, 
dialogue, sort of like a private chat room where all the content lives there and your communications throughout your time with them. Your other option though, is to simply use a form. Uh, and, and a form would be kind of like what I was, I was just sharing um, previously where you can say like, here's the input, here's what it means, here's where it goes. But um, yeah, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about what you're, you're hoping to do. Um, yeah, I, I guess I don't necessarily know that I want to create a separate vault for each client. That sounds like a lot of work. So the form sounds the easiest, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So do you, would you say generally speaking, when you're working with a client, are you, um, when you're having them input their, this personal information, is it more or less the same questions each time? Yes. Perfect. So then what you could do is, uh, and are they in a vault already? Do you have multiple people in the vault? Um, I'm in the process of creating a vault and I okay. didn't, I, yeah, I didn't know this aspect of what to do in, regarding this. So, yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to have a vault to do this. Uh, I was going to say, this is something that you could do inside of a vault with a page. Um, so that like at any point in time prior to a call, they can, or, you know, prior to an, something with you, maybe here's our check-in form and folks can go in and they can enter their information on it. But here, let me show you, um, more or less what this would look like. So you would go to create a page and the simplest way to go about doing this is to just go blank here and then insert a form section. And so we'll go to forms and maybe the form is just, it's just gonna be a really simple one like this. Obviously you would change the copy here uh, to whatever, you know, it's time for our check-in, share your information and updates below, et cetera. So we go into the settings and then under leads, this is where we have the opportunity to ask those questions. So um, depending on the types of questions that you're asking, maybe it's a short response. Oh. Uh, maybe it's a longer response. Maybe you've got a drop down list or a pick list uh, or a multiple choice. Uh, those are all options here. So maybe we've got like a pick one. Uh, so what we could do here is maybe, you know, do like a scale of one to 10, right? And so they would be able to pick that. So we'll say scale of one to four. I think I put four in there. So, um, you know, what's this week been like for you, right? This is obviously not what you would say, <laughs> uh, right? And then this would be, tell me more about that. So, cause it's longer text. Okay. And That's of course great. we can require all of these. Uh, and then of course you can see what this will look like. Let me actually remove this. You can see what this will look like if we go down here and preview. Here we go. So they would put in their information. Of course, you can choose whether or not you require, uh, definitely have the name and email for sure, uh, but you don't have to require the phone. Ask your questions, um, you know, oh, lo longer, short answers. Brilliant pick one of these, et cetera. And then of course you do, if you want to, and this is less for, if you're already working with the client, it's not really something I think that would be as important a feature here, uh, but you do have the ability based on the um, inputs that they give on any multiple choice uh, that you provide to actually tag them uh, or to apply an automation, maybe for you to have a follow-up reminder with them or to receive new information from you or be tagged with something. Okay, that is incredible. Um, is is um, is this form like something that I can see progressively? Like, or is each form like is there? Does it collect the data that I can refer back to? Yes, so to speak, and have an easy way to look at it, like kind of like an Excel. Like, yeah. So you know. it's not, it's not going to read out, uh, data wise, it's not going to read out in the way that you're describing. However, it is easy to obtain that information. So okay. if you go, it's always going to show up in your past actions, which is right here. Okay. And, um, and I believe what it would be called, what are those called, Greg, when those happen? like a registration on a page, you know, offhand it's, I think it's a note, right? Yeah. Note. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So if you filter for note, 
uh, then you can find all of the instances where they've input something. Oh, right. Okay. So, yeah. So you'd be able to see the date that they input it and I, maybe even the time. Yeah. But you can see the date and time that they filled it out and all of that information is there. <laughs> you do also have the ability to track progress in a more manual or even interactive way with them. So gleaning from what they're sharing there, maybe if you're tracking specific metrics with them, you can use the contact progress here. And if you're using a vault uh, that they're in, then they, they can also view and edit this, but you can use this internally up until that point. So the contact progress is only used in a vault? Is that what no, you, you, you can use oh. it here for your own purposes and oh. your own note taking and reference. But if you are utilizing a vault and the client is in the vault, you can choose to allow the contact to view and edit uh, and input information uh, in your progress as well. So if you wanted to track uh, weight, and this is uh, March 2023, and the weight is 210, then we're adding. Um, and then maybe we're adding a new value uh, is, um, you know, is going to be whatever, right? Like you, you can, you can be tracking multiple things. So maybe there's uh, sleep is the other one, right? And the value here is, uh, is seven, right? They slept seven hours. Um, so you can, you can track things like that over time. Oh my gosh. Okay. And how, how does that um, work for them to do in the vault? Like, how does that yeah, yeah. So when when they're logged into the the vault uh, up in the right hand okay. corner, there's a my my account, and when they click it, they'll actually see either a published version of this if you don't allow them to view, uh, or, or you don't allow them to edit, or it looks just like this, and they have the ability to edit. Oh, okay, fabulous. Yeah, that is so helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah, glad we could help. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. All right, you guys, lots of information to digest today. Good news is you got a cheat sheet. <laughs> and the better news is, is that we do this every single week. Uh, and of course, uh, we've got our team who's available for you. And we've got our awesome Facebook group. If you're not a part of that, uh, definitely make sure that you check us out. All right, we are so glad that you have spent your time with us here today. And we hope to see you next week. We're back at 2 p.m. Eastern time next Thursday. Till then, uh, we'll see you in the inbox. We'll see you in the group and we'll see you next time. Take care.